second day, 2002. Seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? That's because it was 20 years ago, the last time Mother will beat Rangers here at Fur Park in the week. And since then, we have had our moments against Rangers, notably the League Cup semi final where Lloyd Wolf scored a double, and the playoff final where we won out 6 1 winners on aggregate. But since then, Rangers have had the first side of the spoils in the league, as I say, no beat them in 20 years. So, will today be the day that Mother will finally beat Rangers? Will Stevie Hamill, who played in that game in 2002, be the manager to break the hoodoo? And what do the Motherwell fans think about the job he's doing here at Fur Park? I think there's been a, a change in the feeling, a change in the atmosphere and the attitude. I think I'm the team and the fans. I the fans are now giving the team a bit more leeway. There's a lot of kind of connectivity between the fans and the, the team. Um, we're playing well, we're playing a better style of football. We're not, we're not still, our results aren't perfect obviously, but we're playing well and there's a bit of hope there at least. We're going to go somewhere with it. Well, considering where they were before he took over, they seem to be playing a mere attractive attacking type of football. Going to win some, going to lose some, because we're not a great big club, but he certainly seems to have Alexander's players playing a better type of football, and they seem to believe in what he's trying to do. Do you think that... I've got a wee omen. Hamill played in the last team to beat the Angels in the week. Is he going to be the manager to break the hoodoo? Aye. There you go. Yes, yes. He's confident. Even with Josh Morris in the starting lineup, Henry is confident. Because Josh Morris is one of these guys that he could be something a bit different and he might just come good at the right time. My question for me today is how will Kevin Van Veen fare against the two Rangers centre halves? Obviously, Rangers having the problems injury wise defensively, with Philippe Hollanda being out for a while now and Connor Golson picking up an injury during the week against Liverpool. So it's going to be a big battle for me. Uh, Van Vini scored, he's in double figures already for the season, so will we get joy against the Rangers centre half? And uh, what do both sets of supporters think about that battle today? Obviously, everybody's seen it, everybody's seen it for themselves when goals went off uh, during the week there, and then we shipped five goals after it's so everybody's put the two through together. And all the same, goals to the hill, guys together, and, and much of that's very true. Uh, and we'll get a couple of youngsters in today, you know. But hopefully, for the, as, a, as a Rangers perspective, hopefully the, the kids will be okay. And, and I'm sure Mother will can exploit that today. You know, they've got a big forward line in Mother will. Yeah. You know, so I, I can see how Mother will fans will, will be saying, this is a good time to get Rangers. You know? We're mass, we were, we still are massive fans of Calvary and Bassey and Joe Revo. And we, we had two players that we feel two of the greatest players that we've seen play for Rangers, they were outstanding and I don't think we've really replaced them, especially Calvin Bassi, he's a big hero to the fans, a big hero to us and I think he can go to the very, very top level of the game in my humble opinion and I think he's been left a huge hole in the defence and they've chopped and James tried to replace him but the team does look weaker from last season because we've let some, some good, good players yeah, I mean, I think if we get the service to him, that's the important thing. Um, obviously, Blair Spittle's going to be doubtful after last week. Um, so if we can get some creativity there and have great, great chances, Kevin goes a problems. He likes to drop deep, he likes to pull wide. Um, perhaps even if he doesn't score, he might soften them up for Moti, Moti to come on and nick a last minute win. It should be. There's Van Veen's good in the air, but the problem is that they've still got two very good fullbacks. Just to exploit the centre-backs you need to put cross balls in. It all depends if our wingers can get decent crosses in. If we can, then Van Veen's got every chance of going and dominate. Something that's been doing the rounds on social media after Rangers 7 1 defeat to Liverpool. It was a record home defeat for Rangers in Europe. As the questions over Giovanni Van Bronco's future, there's a lot of Rangers fans saying online that they want him out. So, is that just online chat or do the fans attending the match today reflect those views? He's keeping them in the job and their Gio will be glad to hear that after the 7 1 down during the week. First half we're, we're alright, we're doing okay, but obviously the second half we do we do good enough by Rangers standards. Uh, but I don't see the change of the manager that make much difference because you still have the same group of players there. You know, if you sack the manager, you don't the background stuff, that will cost money. You know, so I don't see how changing the manager at this stage would make a massive difference. You know? I know people here, Rangers fans, they say, no, oh, we're too slow, we're too pedestrian. 
uh, uh, inward play, you know, and I get that and I understand that, I've said the same myself, but I don't see changing the manager is, is going to make any difference at this stage of the, uh, the season. In my opinion, Gio should be out by now. Personally, I think he's been a fantastic replacement for Gerard. The things that he did last year was outstanding, getting this through to uh, the Europa League final, and I think we just need to keep sticking with him, get behind him. Um, the budget he's got, um, playing against teams and like Liverpool, the squads they've got, and the money they can spend, um, he really has to be given. Uh, Leeway. One or two things didn't go for us on the night, like Conor Goldson getting injured, uh, and again, it's a bit of a disaster, but um, like every Rangers game, they come thick and fast, and we are three or four days later, and it's time to go again. I'd, I'd keep them, because uh, for the best of intentions, we were, it was always likely that there was a chance that things like Wednesday were going to happen in the Champions League. Because it, it happened to the, the the Messiah, Brendan Rodgers, didn't it? Okay. Like, even him. People don't talk about his 7-0. People don't talk about it, so it could happen to anyone. Uh, and we've actually been doing, minus that one horrendous Saturday, we've been doing alright in the league. Like, that lot were struggling. Uh, a wee bit the last couple of weeks and we were starting to put a couple of decent wins together with 4 0 at Tynecastle, it's not no an easy feat. A big talking point this week in Scottish football is the fact that VAR will be introduced, it will be used for the first time this coming Friday night as Hibs take on St Johnson and then it will be implemented across all Scottish Premiership grounds. But what do the fans here think about the introduction of VAR? The fact that it's been brought in in the middle of the season and the fact that it still has its inconsistencies in down south. No, you're the big rugby man. I am, yes, thanks. And, and what I want to touch on with you that I might not get for your other focus, how rugby utilised that system compared to the way that football was utilising it in the moment. What do you think that rugby can take from the way, or football can take from the way that rugby's doing it? They're very different games than rugby, there's more natural stoppages. That's the one thing that, that football maybe doesn't have. Um, and there's slight differences, they do it for things like if it's a try or a no try. Uh, and looking at foul play, particularly rugby union, we've got the television match official and the referees here where he can say, I'm just going to check something, you need to go back for this or that. Um, but obviously with VAR it should be matters of fact, by and large. It's a step in the right direction. I think I remember the Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic. Um, that we should have had, we should have had, things like that would have been eradicated, the result might have been different. So, but that's the past, um, and uh, the referees have got a hard enough job up here, hasn't they? So any help they can get, I guess, uh, is good. I'm worried about it. You know, I don't think the standard, the referees know easy. I don't think the standard of Scotland is brilliant. I just have concerns about VAR coming in. I don't think they use it for the right things, but progress and it's coming and we'll stuff to deal with it. Well, it's whatever the nails, you know, you'll, you'll never get older this league, you're 100% as you've seen them in England, some of the big calls that have been made in the, in the, in the, in the sea, it can cause a lot of controversy, whether you've got it, whether you've not got it, you know, so, in my own opinion, I think they get 99% of the decisions right, you know, it, it, it slows the game down, as you can see, you know, it takes too long for the decision to be made sometimes three, four minutes. Yeah. You know. So I don't know what it's going to bring to Scottish football. There's a bit of a thing, I don't know how you feel about it. Uh, well I think um, it's good that it's coming in. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be refined mm -hmm. in certain circumstances. I think when you're talking about people being mill millimetres offside, I think it needs to be clear to the naked eye that, that it's offside and then you make the, the decision mm -hmm. there. The handball rule at the minute is all over the place yeah. with the shot line, so yeah. I just think there's a few things that need refined, yeah. but definitely yeah. moving in the right direction. Right. Uh, I don't disagree with you, you know, but as you were saying, you know, the people are, are millimetres offside, you know, and to the naked eye, as the, the ordinary fan, you would never see that, you know what I mean? I don't mind, I don't mind it, I think it has its con, like the cons are like if you get a goal and you celebrate and then it gets chopped off, or then like if you get a goal and it gets chopped off and then it goes to VR then you get it, it kind of, it takes away the sort of immediate passion but to be honest, anything that gives more excuse for penalties to Rangers, you know what I mean? Score prediction! 
I think we'll get a draw. I think it'll be it's goals in it. I think it'll be two each. Oof. It's not it's not given, even though you know I'm sure we're probably favourites. Two nil. I'm gonna go one nil. They, they never specified who that was for, so we're just assuming that it's a 2 note in Motherwell and a 1 note in Motherwell fan. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously you're a Motherwell fan, I'm a Motherwell fan. We've got, we've got to be nice and positive. Let's take 2-1. We're a, a low emote winner was, was offside and wasn't over the line the week before that. How about that? I'll go, I'll go, I'll go a wee, wee 2-1 Rangers. He'll, he'll scare us, he'll give us that wee scare, but, but we'll get over the line. And uh, I've got a couple, I've got an extra question for you, okay. Andy, because we'll talk more off camera yep. about um, disabled facilities and um, the view for disabled supporters. I take it that you get access to those tickets yourself? Yeah, well, I, 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 wear, I wear splints, you know. <laughs> uh, I did have a, I was a wheelchair user, you know, but uh, I got some surgery done, I'm okay there, but I can see the economy, I've been in your position where the disabled facility, not just uh, I work, so far back, you know, if you go right across the board in Scottish football, it's abysmal, absolutely abysmal. They're still living in the dark ages as disabled fans. For me, I think that clubs do the bare minimum because that hasn't been highlighted, yeah. and that's what we're trying to do on this channel. So for you, as a disabled supporter, what is it that you would like to see? Because I've given my opinion many times on this channel, but I would like to give everybody a voice for what do you want to see? I would like to see the hierarchy of clubs actually come down and, you know, watch a game at a disabled fan's view, you know, and see what we're having to deal with as a disabled fan. You know, if I gave you my walking stick, most people wouldn't know I've got a disability. You know, if I wear splints, you know, there's hidden disabilities there, both of them. I get one knock and I'm, I get down the stairs. And then, the, 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 the people in the ground are assuming you're, you're drunk, you know, you're disabled, you know. Yeah. So I think the hierarchy of football grounds have to look at the disabled facilities at all grounds. I mean, you know, we've seen them wherever I went, you know, and you're stuck battling the elements consistently, you know. And, and this is what I say, it goes back to education, doesn't it? People need educated and it's not, people don't mean it in a nasty way, I don't think. Clubs don't mean it in a nasty way, but they need educated about what we need. I went to a disabled secondary school, you know, uh, and the, the situation was very much the same. You know, I went to school in the, uh, the late 70s, early 80s at uh, high school. And I mean, we're still in that era, and we're in 2022. So there's 20, 30, 40 years and we're no further forward as disabled supporters. You know, and I find that is a, a, a damning indictment to the SFA and anybody else that facilitates your game. So, I did say that I would give my score prediction before the game. Coming here, I felt quite confident, um, but I haven't seen the lineup. No effort, no moat in the squad, and um, I, I'm very, I'm a bit worried because I've seen Rangers line up. They've got Matondo in there, they've got Kent, Tillman, Cholak. So there's definitely a, a Rangers side that's going to create chances today. I, I haven't seen the sides. I cannot sit here and say that I think we're going to win this game. I think it's going to be. 3-1 to Rangers. Teams. These kind of games don't define our season. But I think this game is a massive game for Rangers. Go on, go on, go on. Oh, the wee half chance there for Motherwell. I say half chance. We win the ball back in the middle of the park. And I think it was Sean Goss, he fed it, Sean Goss, he fed it through and Van Veen just couldn't go on the end yet. But there's been a couple of sides of that in the first 15 minutes where Rangers have gave, gave the ball away a wee bit cheaply for trying to play for defence in the midfield. So hopefully, hopefully, that's something that we can capitalise on in this game. There's been not much in it, 15 minutes gone, nil, nil at the moment. Yeah, so we must 
the corner there later on as well. That's Bruno. Um, but aye, just a full man, Tillman had a shot straight into the hands of William Kelly. This game has been dire so far. Rough of each. But no, we've had, a, we've had a corner, we've had a couple of half chances here There are moments in the game where you think we might create So there's signs there that if the game continues like this The chances will come, but half an hour in the game I'm sorry I've not had more footage for you But there's really been very little in the way of goal faction And it's nil-nil uh, I'm telling you right, Ross Tierney was in there He's in mind the danger of defence and no, he's been saying he's offside, but I'm looking right along at it and for year, he looked at least a yard onside. No doubt the sky camera has approved me. Absolutely wrong with that one, but there's been a couple of questionable decisions for the linesman here in the first half. Booze for the away end at half time, that's a good sign. Good sign for us. It means it's Mullerwell now. Raiders now at half time. Dreadful game of football. Good chance there for Rangers. I can't think it's down the flag. Clips one up, and it's exactly what Antonio Cholak feeds off, and he has fed off since he joined Rangers. And he, he, when he gets up there, you're just expecting him to head it into the net, and he heads it thankfully for us. Why did the post to the groans of the Rangers fans behind the goal, which I'm sure you've just heard behind me there. is when you cause your own problems and that's exactly what we do we get a turnover in the middle of the park you think we're going to break and then we give the ball away mostly in midfield and Malik Tillman he just runs through everybody and slots it beyond Liam Kelly who had absolutely no chance maybe he could have made the angle a wee bit tighter quicker but to be honest it's got to be defended better in front of him Tillman should never be allowed to run into the box the way he is and finish it the way he did when it comes for us giving the ball away in the middle of the park One thing that worries me, we've just got under half an hour to go for stoppage time Is that we usually have the likes of Mo and effort to bring off the bench That threat isn't there for us today um, they, they don't, They're not in the squad so um, I just don't see where we're going to get a goal from Particularly when no one chance of it is that one that I've told you about With Kevin Van Bean uh, having the shot straight at Alan McGregor Okay there was a couple of moments in the first half where we thought we could maybe get through them, but it just wasn't to be. Um, and I think um, Rangers are just going to see the game out. I hope I'm wrong though. Again, as I speak, but uh, the corner whipped up by Barisic and John Lundstrom heads it in, and with that, I think those are chances of winning or getting anything rather for this game. I mean, I'm not holding my breath 
Because I got to the point in going for me and does a day to be honest with you. I'm going to have nothing to do. The game will finish. Mother will one Rangers two. Joined by Alfie, Alexander, and Thomas. Go that late, didn't I, boys? Did I get that late? Ah, you see, spot on, good memory. What do you, you think of the game? Uh, it was fabulous. Uh, I think I could have done better. I'd be honest, even though you beat two of I don't uh, know about I, I think McIntyre's going to give us the belief, you know? Ah, uh, thank I think the first half was a bit, a bit quiet. Aye, I think, I think maybe we could have done it a little bit stick up. I think we could maybe have won 3-1, 3-2, if, uh, what's his name, Tillman, and another team called Tillman, something was closing down. I don't think we would have scored that. I think it would have been 1-1. Yeah. So I'll ask you one last question, before, before they let you go. What do you, how do you think Mullerwell got to do this season? I don't know, I, I've got a feeling they're going to come, maybe club. Or four. Bye, four bye. Bye. I think we're a bit low. I think I'm putting about six in there the way up. How about you, Stu? What do you think? Uh, I think uh, some, like last year, because some games have gone better than last year. Some games have gone worse. But I think one will finish. Uh, about that. So, what are you thinking, lads? Are you thinking that he's okay? Um, I think we pick up a bit of form. We beat Celtic in second of January. I think it's definitely taken. It's only two points, you know what I mean? Right. It's definitely taken. Definitely, definitely taken. Full time, the pub park and finishes Motherwell 1, Rangers 2. Let's get into the review. We'll start with my own team, Motherwell. Uh, I'm going to give them a 4 out of 10. The only reason is, I think in the first half, we didn't really create anything. Um, Rangers were poor. I don't think Rangers did much, but there was a couple of times that there was loose balls in the middle of the pitch and it, it was breaking. And we weren't capitalising on that, we weren't creating anything for I think there was a through ball point to Kevin Mann being there, he never got on the end of. And then McKinstry had a cross that sailed all the way through wide, but apart from that, literally nothing for me to report on in the first half. And then second half of the ball, we started to feel fairly comfortable. And then we give away a ball in the middle of the park. And Rangers capitalised, Tillman goes right through. Uh, he's allowed to run right into a box, five players, nobody stops him. Somebody's got to engage with him and, and force him to go back, but we don't do that. Uh, and he slots it beyond Liam Kelly for 1-0. And then the second goal, we don't defend a set piece, so I know Stevie Hamill was going to look at that and go, no good enough, you've got to defend set pieces, it's the basics of the game. And front post area, somebody should have been there to clear it. I mean, Dublin's so stupid to get it into the net. And at that point you're 2-0 down and you get a bit of a mini mountain to climb. I mean, we tried our best to climb it. We shot McKinsey, scored in the goal, and it was a fantastic goal. Whips it right in for the pre kick 2-1. But after that, we, again, we didn't do much. So it was a bit of a shot for nothing from us. And I, 4 out of 10. On the Rangers now, and usually when I do these reviews, in a game there's one team that are well better than the other. But I don't think Rangers were overly brilliant today. I, I, I look at the game and I go, the goals that we conceded were avoidable, as I've just said. Uh, I thought Ben Davies was really, really solid for Rangers. I thought he had, he had a cracking game. But Tondo and Kent looked dangerous at points. Um, but I Rangers take two of their chances, uh, and that's what the game's about. But I can only give them a 6 out of 10 for the performance. And I'm sure that the Rangers fans in the comments will agree, because I don't think Wayne Kelly's really had much to do, apart from pick a ball in the net. So I'm 6 out of 10. For Rangers on to the referee now, we spoke a lot before the game about VAR coming in, and I know there's a lot of decisions that I thought the referee got wrong today uh, that, that wouldn't have went to VAR because it's just small things like we should have had a corner here, or the, he stopped the play in an instance where I didn't think he had to stop it. He, he, maybe at times he booked Sean Goss for time wasting. It was the time wasting, I mean, there was a minute to go in the first half. For goodness sake, so I think that was a bit, um, bit harsh and I don't think him or his linesmen have had the best of games today so I can only give them a, a 3 out of 10, I thought it was a really 
poor performance uh, from the officials. But I spoke about the big talking point uh, before the game, and it was how Kevin Van Veen was going to do against the two centre halves. And listen, the two Rangers centre halves were, were really, really good. I don't think they ever looked threatened. I think there was a moment in the second half where Kevin Van Veen burst in behind Leon King um, and the slide tackle, and he gets booked. So. Apart from that, they never really looked I mentioned earlier when Davis strolled it. So I'm going to give the Rangers centre back partnership an 8 out of 10, which brings our total to 21 out of 40 for the experience at Pub Park. Thanks to everybody that's come on today and spoke to, spoke to us. Thanks to the, the people that have come up after the game as well and said that the live we're doing on the channel. We really appreciate the support and as you heard. By Andy, I think his name was uh, sorry, I'm telling all the names uh, before the game. <laughs> is that horn goes right into your filming? Just what you're wanting. <laughs> um, but aye, as, as Andy says, uh, we need more done for disabled supporters. So it's good to hear other people that get disabled access echoing what I'm saying. But listen, we don't let the start of this journey. So if you do enjoy the videos, please do leave a like, share and subscribe because we're trying to spread the word as far away as possible uh, and we'll be back here on Wednesday night for Motherwell v Celtic and the League Cup so join us for that one. See you soon.